The interesting thing is that almost all of this is about the social sciences. It, uh, as I joke with many, uh, it's the revenge of librarians. <laughs> because it is. This is the revenge of librarians. We do not have the algorithmic capability uh, to be able to handle some of the complexities. This is very much a human intervened thing. You refer to, we try to talk about it in the terms of Vs. And so let's break down these Vs, volume, variety, and velocity. Volume, if you can see this graph, you, you may say, you see in the middle, it's from 2010 to 2015 on the right side, and we are here is in the middle. So if we thought that there was a lot of data here today, um, we are just at the tip of where this is going to go, even in the next three years. This is not about a 10-year picture. 80% of it now is unstructured data. It would be nice if it was all in a relational database that so we could just all manage it, um, but it doesn't come that way any longer. So remember that, 80% is unstructured. And uh, velocity, it's just in time. There's so much data that you couldn't possibly store it to put it in a contained spot so you can understand it and do something with it. So this is kind of that moment in time kind of time that you have to actually see it as it's going by because if you don't do it, you don't make a decision on something that's going by, uh, you'll miss that point. Actually, some really fundamental methodological challenges that are emerging when we start looking for patterns in data without necessarily knowing what we're looking for, and yet that's where some of the most interesting things emerge. The other issue, of course, is that correlation's not causation, and the fact that we have all this data, the fact that we can analyze it, doesn't necessarily mean we know anything without doing other kinds of research to look at the explanatory framework. Uh, while historically in engineering and computer science and, and sciences, researchers have had labs and budgets have been designed to allow for lab technicians and support and so on. You don't have anything comparable um, in terms of a lot of the big data analysis. And there are still challenges in getting multidisciplinary research funded. Some of the most powerful opportunities are where you take someone from humanities, a computer scientist, a social scientist, someone from the business school, throw them in a group to, to deal with some problems. It's not easy to get research of that sort supported. Two aspects here, I think, are very important for the social sciences. First, the digital era changes, changed the way we actually do research. So on the one hand, We've got new phenomena like social media, Twitter and Facebook. We've got new data source and we can study with these new data sources, these new uh, phenomena. But it also increased in the way we do research, the research collaboration. The second point, which I think is very important, is training. We need to remember in social sciences that the, <laughs> the first thing, the, our students come to study social sciences because they're afraid of data because they don't want to deal with mathematics, they don't want to deal with numbers. And so I'm teaching a class to information scientists, I've got 120 of them, only showing them one simple statistics and they run away. So it really is a big challenge for us in the social sciences to train students who will be good at analyzing uh, this data. You ever wonder why Google Maps is as effective as it is, or FlightAware? Where does all that come from? That comes from federal agency data. And so you can think of, in Canada, uh, Enercan. If Natural Resources Canada starts publishing, the va and, and they probably make up maybe three quarters of all the data uh, within the Canadian government. If that starts being published, then you can imagine what resource companies, oil and gas, mining, et cetera, can do on a crowdsourcing basis. So there's some tremendous opportunities for everyone. So in terms of what we can do as granting councils, I think there is huge potential with respect to tying some elements of behavior and research behavior to the granting process. So, and in ways most people expect and most people will understand in order to bring the system together. So we will develop this over the next few weeks. We will be con begin consulting with stakeholders, uh, I would say probably within a month, and then with the broader community uh, towards the summer, in order to develop the kind of policy and regulatory framework that will help us as a country build the uh, network and build the infrastructure that we need to manage the data flows and the research that results from that uh, over the next uh, decades.